There are a bunch of watches that get hyped up as great pieces for enthusiasts, but the reality of ownership is that it highlights some annoying little quirks when actually living with a watch day to day. So here's 10 enthusiast watches to watch out for. If watches were seasonal holidays, Max Busa would be Santa, and during this time of benevolence I like to give thanks not just for his wild imagination, but also for thinking of the people who don't have half a million pounds to spend on a sapphire dong. The Mad One edition is MBNF's not MBNF, that's basically a Ferrari for fiat money, originally built so all the friends involved in Max Busa and friends could have a watch too. Max is basically the Willy Wonka of watches, and every now and then a few lucky winners secure a golden ticket to get one of a limited run of the Mad One. In fact, Max has even made a special lucky edition of the watch for people who've entered all three raffles and lost, so even fakers like Grandpa Joe can have one. Max is just that kind of guy. It's an exciting thing to own, a watch from Max Busa, even if it isn't officially an MBNF. That the sculptural, artistic and interactive endeavour of the brand translated so well into an entry level piece is just fantastic. And the Mad One fulfils the promise and then some. The tall glass house is dominant but not heavy, so it's comfortable to wear. The side mounted time display is dramatically different but also surprisingly practical to use once you realise it goes the other way to what's expected. But where it all jumps into hyperspace Space is with the inverted movement dominated by a triple bladed flying battle axe. We've seen this style element used in other actual MBNF watches before, which is what ultimately cements this watch, for me at least, as a true MBNF product. As well as getting to enjoy the always surprisingly well appointed Myota movement, there's the unexpected benefit of the satisfaction gleaned by launching the rotor into a death defying spin. It's not easy to get a good spin, and so success is all the more rewarding. It's addictive too, trying to match or even best a previous run. Here's where it goes wrong though. Getting a good spin can take a few tries, sometimes one or two, sometimes, if your game is off, in excess of five. But one good spin isn't enough. You want 2, 3, 10, 20 and so on. This puts a lot of strain on, as it turns out, the elbow. After the first week of wearing the Mad One, I had to take a break because my elbow was in constant pain. Not terrible, but not that fun either. Enough to need some cold turkey. And that's not even the worst part, because of course when you tell your friends you've got RSI in your elbow and you try to blame it on your watch, none of them believe you. Have you ever heard the expression, all the gear and no idea? It's basically when a complete noob buys the most expensive stuff and has no idea how to use it. See any male dominated hobby. That same philosophy also applies to collecting stuff. Don't just jump straight to an original pressing of the White Album or a 250 GTO. Pace yourself and enjoy the journey. A year or so ago I bought a Kamado. It's an egg shaped thing made of ceramic and it's used for cooking. You can go very hot and turn it into a pizza oven, real low and slow and smoke a pork shoulder, or somewhere in between for pretty much everything else. For example, steak. I have never had a better steak anywhere else than the ones I cook on my Kamado. It's not a brag, because you're not having one. More to emphasise the point that I've basically ruined having a steak at a restaurant. And that's what my wife has done with her Rolex Oyster Perpetual. She's got a bunch of different watches, but now she has the Oyster Perpetual, they all seem a bit… moot. She wears them, but only because she feels she has to, like they resent her for leaving them unworn. It's like having one child who's top of their class, head of the football team and scoring straight A's, where the others are eating crayons and getting stuck in railings. She's also deathly afraid of getting mugged for it. It's small and she wears it under a cuff and can kill at 10 paces with just a glare, but still she's worried it might land her in some trouble. So basically when she's not wearing it, she feels a bit bad, and when she is, she feels a bit bad too. And despite all that, I can't think of a better watch to suit her lifestyle than that. The only other watch she wants is the Van Cleef & Arpels Hoyer Floral and that's a quarter million. Oh, she also wants the Barbie Pink Tag Hoyer Carrera too, but I'm pretending I don't know about that. The Longines Legend Diver is the first retro throwback watch I ever purchased and it continues today to be one of the cheapest, best looking watches from the brand. The twin crown compressor style case with an internal bezel is almost entirely unique this side of a Zizhe Le Coult. And for people who'd rather slam their dick in a door than buy a Tudor, it's a very good alternative. 
So why don't you see more of them? Well, despite being 42mm across, the case diameter isn't really an issue. With the bezel internalised and only a skinny lip of metal around the edge, the case itself wears very comfortably on most wrists. The lugs, however, are a different story. It's because of watches like the Legend Diver that we have to consider the lug to lug of a watch, because this thing's got lugs like a tarantula has legs. They keep going and going, seemingly without end, like that bit about Tom Bombadil, and unless your wrist could be mistaken for a doner kebab, it just doesn't work. The proportions may be historically accurate, but then if I've learned anything from history, it's that there's a whole load of it we probably shouldn't do again. But never fear, because Longines have decided to remedy this error. The original reissue of The Legend Diver came to be all the way back in 2007, and it only took Longines 16 years to get around to fixing it. Not only has it been updated to 39mm instead of 42, but the lugs have been reprofiled so it no longer resembles a four-handled frying pan. Could you imagine being able to buy a watch that can tell the time in multiple formats, track the calendar without needing adjustment, and record intervals up, down, and split, all for the price of a 10-pack of Mars bars? Well, thanks to Casio and its legendary F91W, you can. It's so cheap you can buy one for yourself and one to throw at each of your friends. You can buy a set, one to wear and the others to make a belt with. There are literally more of these than there are grains of sand on a beach. Maybe even all the beaches. You'd be hard pushed to find a complaint for one of these, and to be fair, the whole while you're wearing it, there is no complaint. How could you complain? Do you honestly expect more for less? No. Where the issue lies is in the removal of the watch. And the longer it's been worn for, the warmer the day, and the more extreme the activity, the worse the situation gets. Because the strap is basically plastic and has virtually no way to breathe, it turns into a little habitat, sealed from the outside world, getting warmer and damper and smellier with every passing moment. After a long day, the underside of this watch can rival a high school gym locker for dank pungency. It's like a blast of morning breath straight from the wrist and there's nothing you can do about it. Doesn't matter if you started your morning with a chemical peel. A long day trimming hedges in the sun will turn the F91W into a time-telling Petri dish. Ever wondered how Casio gets the battery to last seven years? Yeah, because they'd do anything to delay having to touch the back of someone's stinky watch. Thankfully, being water resistant, it's easy enough to hose off, but you will always have to rip the band-aid off, so to speak, after every fruitful wear. One of my favourite watches of the last few years, as you all probably well know by now, is the Christopher Ward Bel Canto. At least, now it's won a GPHG award, I won't feel like such an idiot trying to convince people how good it is. It really is that good. It really can stand to be in the company of MBNFs and Moses and Ulysse Nardans and the like and not feel like a complete fraud. I would honestly go so far as to say that in the future, the bel canto will be considered a definitive moment when people realise that watches could be a whole lot better. I'll end my praise there, however, because as is the theme for this conversation, it's all about the actual long-term experience. And the bel canto has some issues. The first is that for reasons unbeknownst to me and probably him too, my dog hates the chime. It's not a particularly loud ding, just loud enough in the company of a few other people to be heard by its wearer, just about. My dog reacts like I just let rip at a crowded funeral right as the widow finished her eulogy. Which is ridiculous because if anyone's ripping anything, 99 times out of 100, it's him. That's just a mild inconvenience though, and really more for him than it is for me, as it means he has to get up off his lazy dog butt and go somewhere else. No, the real problem with the bel canto is far more intrusive. You see, despite almost four decades of practice, I'm terrible at sleeping. I've mastered eating, my drinking is solid, and I can pass waste with the best of them. But sleeping, I just never got the hang of. I'm like a souffle. Everything has to be perfect. If the conditions are wrong, sleeping will fail and I have to start again. Game over. Back to level 1, world 1. You would think the tiny little ding from the bel canto would be fine, but no. I'm such a light sleeper. It's not. So if I forget to turn off the hour strike function, it wakes me up every hour. Sometimes it doesn't wake me fully, but it disturbs me enough to know the next morning it was happening. But it also doesn't wake me up enough to realise what's going on and turn it off. You see, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't know about these things. You're welcome. 
five enthusiast favourites and the truth of the ownership experience. What enthusiast watches do you own that have a little fly in the ointment? Let me know down in the comments below. Please also like and subscribe and don't forget to use the workplace microwave to exclusively reheat fish. Goodbye. Still here? Watch this video next. <laughs>